Uh, in recent scholarship, uh, there is a growing recognition of uh, climate's role as a uh, significant factor in historical analysis. This is uh, emerging and this is emerging as a uh, new area of research uh, uh, within environmental history. Now, while these uh, authors who have talked about climate as uh, one of the factors, they do not attempt to reduce history uh, just solely to climate. In fact, what uh, they have done is that they highlighted uh, climate changes as the uh, main drivers. And in fact, one of the important drivers uh, behind the you know the profound political and cultural uh, shifts and changes uh, that we see in different regions of the world so there are uh, very interesting works like uh, uh, wolfgang uh, beringer's work climate change and witch hunting uh, which uh, proposes kind of a very interesting analysis of the harsh conditions of the little ice age and um, how you know it intensified the persecution of women uh, accused of witchcraft because they were the one who were often uh, blamed for uh, causing you know bad weather through in the 17th century through their you know uh, alleged pacts with the satan so i mean there are interesting works like these uh, you have another very interesting work like joseph miller's uh, the way of death and similarly, you know, one of the work that I'm going to talk about today is uh, Richard Bulliet's uh, Cotton Climate and Camels in Early uh, Islamic Iran, uh, which I found to be very uh, uh, interesting and which I think uh, all uh, history students should uh, read uh, if at all they want to understand that how a historian uses different textual evidences and uh, you know literary accounts along with the proxy records so uh, he has uh, you know richard bulliet has very interestingly provided uh, climate driven uh, you know analysis of the the entire economic and political scenario of the uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of regions of uh, North Iran. So, you know, uh, Richard Bulliet uh, uh, in this book examines how, you know, from the 7th century when the Muslims uh, uh, they, they, they conquered Iran and the Arabian regions, they started growing cotton and they made textiles. So they prospered because they were growing cotton at that time. So and then he, you know, he's, he, he explains in the later part of the book that, you know, how in the 11th century, the climate changes and then it makes a lot of, you know, it, it changes the entire course of history of uh, that region. So in that sense that uh, this book is very interesting. Uh, in fact, Richard, what Richard Bulliet has done in this book is that he adopts a very balanced approach and uh, he acknowledges the role of uh, humans the ro role of you know the common people yeah, the role of animals and uh, the ecology the 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 climate the local climate the changing climate in shaping history so you know he talks about the cotton boom that we uh, see in northern iran which was uh, which uh, we witness in the 7th 8th century and it's continued till uh, the 10th century and uh, he says that uh, for all these long centuries to three centuries we find that uh, you know the region has prospered in many ways but uh, you know in the 11th century what we see is that uh, there is a cooling trend uh, in the entire region and it has disrupted the uh, economic stability of the region which uh, was actually so much dependent on uh, cotton production 
So the cotton cultivation actually provided the, you know, the economic prosperity for the region. And then when the cooler temperature became cooler, you know, the, the cotton uh, production went into decline. So that ultimately influenced the both the economic history as well as the political history of the region. So basically what Richard Bulliet has done that he has uh, argued uh, that the, the shifts that, that take place, you know, the shifts in the commercial agriculture, it had significant implication for you know, Iran's connection to the spread of Islam in the world history. So that is uh, quite an interesting uh, take by Richard Bulliet. And, the, you, know, in, you know, in the initial part of his book, what we see is that uh, he provides us with evidence of, you know, cotton boom's occurrence and its impact on uh, the religious practices. So the, you know, he talks about the uh, different... Uh, New literary accounts. He talks about, you know, the different areas, the cotton villages that were controlled by the Muslims at that time. So that helped in, uh, you know, cotton booms, uh, uh, cotton boom, as well as uh, the the uh, you know influence of uh, Islamic uh, uh, spread. So the all this has been talked about uh, in the initial part of the book. But if we go on to read his other, you know, the later section of his book, we find that Bulliet examines the environmental factors and, you know, how these environmental factors, the, the changes in the climate uh, influence the history. So, you know, he, he studies the, in order to understand the climate, the changing climate, he uses the trading data from you know the mongolian region and then he he understand that how there has been you know a trend of uh, you know a trend of temperature drop during 11th century so he also then tries to understand the you know the 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 temperature of the surrounding region so and then he argues that this was a period this was a century when you have this uh, he uses a term called big chill so he says that there is a big chill which uh, brought to an end the boom of the cotton cultivation and then it provided some kind of a, a different environment. So the trajectory of cotton production, uh, uh, you know, in, in medieval Iran, uh, it, it was not so very consistent. It was not always and, you know, uh, taking an, a consistent upward trend. So, uh, so he talks about these, these environmental changes in the 11th century and he says that how it devastated the cotton cultivation uh, and then it allowed the Turkish tribes, the Turks, the Turkic tribe to migrate to this region of Iran uh, because they were involved in co co camel breeding and the new environment was then conducive to camel breeding. So the Turks then get engaged in uh, the breeding of the camels for sale as uh, pack animals to, you know, the, the silk uh, uh, routes, the trading routes. And they adopted kind of a, uh, you know, very quickly to the changing economic landscapes in which was influenced both by climate and of also by the the, the changing trade routes of the time. So he, he talks in detail about the, the migration of the Turks in, into Iran and he explores, uh, you know, Bulliet explores the, the, you know, the politics or the, you know, the, the camel itself, uh, they are they interconnected, you know, the, the coming of the, uh, uh, you know, the camel, all the, uh, the proliferation of the camel breeding of in the 11th century, whether these are interconnected. So, and then, uh, you know, what he does is that, uh, you know, 
he uh, richard bulliet approaches uh, his argument with very if you if you read his book you know he's not suggesting that it is kind of a deterministic history it he's not suggesting that uh, you know uh, there is some kind of a deterministic causation conclusion uh, uh, when the weather changes, when the climate changes. So while he acknowledges the significance of the, you know, the cooling, the big chill uh, in the decline of cotton uh, cultivation, he also emphasizes that uh, it was one of the contributing factor rather than the sole factor. So Richard Bulliet, in fact, uh, highlights the importance of human agency he doesn't set aside the human factor uh, which is uh, one of the primary catalysts for all historical change uh, i mean uh, so like many historians he says that it is the humans themselves who are the prime agents of change but then he says that these uh, climate changes have contributed a bit to the you know the the, the changing economic and political scenario so you know the uh, the impact of the cooling trend uh, in that sense uh, uh, was not a uniform trend all across uh, Iran, and he accepts that, and he it it is in fact uh, uh, quite uh, natural also for I mean anybody any historian who who says, who argues that he is not talking about a deterministic or he's not avoiding some kind of a deterministic conclusion. He's also suggesting that there are regional perspectives for, you know, in the similar uh, changing climatic scenario, there are regional uh, developments of different forms. So in that sense, uh, you know, uh, this is one book which I think is quite uh, uh, interesting for all uh, uh, you know uh, scholars who want to study who want to study climate as one of the um, you know factors or want to study the climate history as such so you know it is not exactly uh, you know uh, a kind of a uh, climate based history but it does actually talk about climate as one of the factors and animals also the non humans as uh, one of the agencies now another very interesting book of uh, similar type is, is sam white's book the climate of rebellion in uh, early modern ottoman empire which was published uh, uh, immediately 2 3 years after uh, richard bulliet's book and uh, it also draws on the historical climatology and the you know the textual sources that a historian could use to argue for you know the relevance of climate or you know the climate anomaly uh, in history, history writing so he talks about the drought situation the coal situation particularly during the uh, you know little ice age uh, or the 17th century period uh, for the decline of the Ottoman Empire. So Sam White argues for the, uh, you know, uh, you know, argues that, you know, that uh, the Ottoman historiography about 17th and 18th century, how they were based on the, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, decline narrative. And they were uncritical of the the primary sources so he says that as a historian we need to be you know reading the primary sources critically and that can be done through you know through other sources that we have uh, the sources related to climate so sam Wintz actually he, he, he is in he is trying to understand 17th century as uh, as a period of uh, transformation for the Ottoman Empire and he, he thinks that the decline of uh, the very strong ruling authority uh, is actually uh, not only because of the institutional problems there are also uh, you know other factors at work so 
so basically the ottoman crisis is not uh, uh, because of the conflicts among the political and economic interest group or it is uh, only because of the you know the problems within that uh, empire itself rather he thinks that it was uh, part of the you know the the ecological pressure uh, that the region of middle east was facing uh, during the 17th century so i think these are the two very interesting books uh, for all research scholars to read and for all history students who who are uh, who are uh, studying uh, environmental history or global environmental history they should study